bibigay sa iyo ng kauhawan na patuloy mo siyang makilala. Church, the temple is up, the tempter is active today. The devil tempts us to sin and the devil tempts us because he is our enemy. Well, the devil is like a sabi nga po, fierce as a roaring lion and he is seeking to destroy and to ruin and ang sabi nga po, para sirain ang bawat isa. Sabi po ni Peter, 1 Peter chapter 5 and in verse 8, Be sober! Be vigilant. Why? Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, 
walketh about and seeking whom he may be born. Ang sabi ang kalaban, he's like a roaring lion, iingay lang siya. Naghahanap lang siya ng masisila. Never trifle with temptations, it is deadly and dangerous. Flee from it as you would from a poisonous snake. Gaya ng isang ahas na makamandag, huwag mong laruin. Huwag mong alagaan. Huwag mong i-baby. Sabi, iwanan mo, takasan mo, layuan mo. The tempter entices in many ways. Mga kapatid, sabi sa ating binasa, <coughs> maraming paraan upang ang devil ay gumawa ng paraan para tayo ay matempt or entice to commit sins or evil. There are areas of the devil's appeal to sin are stated as the lash of the flesh, the lash of the eyes, and the pride of life. And these three areas, mga kapatid, in which Eve was tempted. Do you remember in the book of Genesis, paano uh, tinem si, si Eva at si Adan? In Genesis chapter 3 and in verse 6, and sabi, three areas, the lash of the flesh, the lash of the eyes, and the pride of life. Basahin po natin sa Genesis, and if you have your Bible, look at that also. Verse 6, Genesis 3, And when the woman saw, nakita ng babae, and that's what we call the lash of the flesh, desire, that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant for the eyes, and that's the lash of the eyes, and that the tree to be desired to make one wise, we call the pride of life, position and power. She took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave unto her husband, and with her he did eat. Mga kapatid, sabi three areas. Ano yung tatlong areas na yun? First, the last of the flesh. What's that? What I want. What would be called pleasure. Last of the eyes, which is what I like. And that's possession. And third, the pride of life. What I need. That is position or what we call power. Jesus was tempted, mga kapatid. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 to 11. And you and I, you and I, we will also experience the same. Three areas in which we're gonna be tempted. Unang puntos po mga kapatid, Jesus has fasted how many days? 40 days and 40 nights. And during that time mga kapatid, His appetite had ceased. And now to demand that food, but all of the end of that period, His appetite awakened and hunger returned. Yes, 40 days and 40 nights, magugutom nga po ang ating Panginoong Heso Kristo mga kapatid. But Jesus' thoughts turned to food and the devil took the advantage of his natural hunger. Nagkaroon na po na tinatawag ng paraan at pumasok ang kalaban ay nag-fasting nag, nag ng Panginoon. 40 days and 40 nights. Then, papasok, magugutom ka na, kumain ka na. Matthew chapter 4, verse 3, the Bible says, If thou be the Son of God, the devil said, Command that these stones be made to bread. Gutom ka na, Jesus. No, i-command mo na ang batong ito ay maging tinapay para makakain ka. Notice the subtle chain or the subtle challenge in that statement. If indeed you really are the Son of God, alam niya eh, na siya ay anak ng Diyos eh. Jesus was challenged to prove that He was God's Son, right? Now to take that preservation of his life and in his own hands to turn and sabi po his ministry into a bread crusade just to enlist the support of the people mga kapatid ano yun para makakain lamang but he refused he would not do even a good thing when the tempter was behind it Jesus answered it is written and sabi ng Panginoon Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word which proceeded out of the man of God. Unta unang puntos mga kapatid, the tempter calls for the satisfaction of the physical desire. Pagkakalan mo, ano yung physical desire? Yun mismo yung gustong mangyari eh, ng kalaban. At ang sabi ng, 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 ng Bible, nung nagut, nung nag, fasting ang Panginoon ng 40 days and 40 nights, ang advantage siya agad ng kalaban to tempt Jesus by the devil, magugutong siya. Kinakailangan maisahan ko siya. Jesus, buwin mo ngang tinapay ang batong ito. Alam kong ikaw ay anak ng Diyos. Secondly, mga kapatid, the tempter calls for display with gender's pride. Ano yung pride? Taking Jesus to the pinnacle of the temple sa kataas-taasan, then the devil challenge him again. Verse 5 and 9, Matthew 4. If thou be the son of God, ano sabi ng devil? Cast thyself down. Magpatihulog ka. Then he even quoted 
yung mga miniscope niyang scriptures to entice Jesus the more. Ano yun? Supposedly, Jesus had done so. Pag talagay na natin, ginawa nga ng Panginoon yung inuutos ng devil na magpatihulog siya. If he had dropped 450 feet from that pinnacle of what we call that kind of uh, valley, the Kidron Valley, without injury, people would have taught him, wow, what a great man of God. But Jesus refused to do it. Why? Because faith must be based on fact, not on a spectacular display. Tandaan po natin, Jesus refused to perform miracles just to impress people. Hindi ho nagbira ka crusade si Jesus Christ ng time na yun dahil ayaw niyang i-impress ang mga tao. Ang gusto ni Jesus Christ magkaroon ng faith and not to impress people. And when he heard so Jesus, he was exceedingly glad. That sabi sa Luke 22 verse 8 and 9, where he was desirous to see him of a long season. Why? Because he had heard many things of him and he hoped to have seen some miracles done by Him. Ang gusto mga kapatid ni Herod, makakita pa ng milagrong ginagawa ni Kristo kasi ang napakinggan niya, nabalitaan niya, na gumagawa ng mga milagro si Jesus Christ. Then He questioned Him in many words, but He answered Him. Anong ginawa ni Kristo? He answered Him. Herod, nothing. Jesus performed miracles to relieve human needs, mga kapatid. But the thing is, the tempter entices in many ways. But in these lessons, ikatlong puntos mga kapatid. First, the tempter calls for the satisfaction of the physical desire. Secondly, the tempter calls for a display of gender's pride. Thirdly, the tempter calls for a compromise of one's principle. Iko-compromise din minsan yung iyong prinsipyo. The devil what? Offer Jesus what? All the kingdoms of the world and all the glory of them. Upon with the condition na niyon, mga kapatid, that Jesus would fall down and worship the devil. Well, beware of the temptation to come to the terms with the world, to lower your standards, or to compromise. Kapatid, that will gather a crowd, yes, but it will not promote the kingdom of God. Jesus knew that and he refused to yield it with high standards. What is the Christians to do today when faced with the same temptation? He must do nothing less than obey fully the commands of God by His grace only. Biruin niya yan. Sabi ng kalaban, bibigay ko sa iyo ang lahat ng yaman na salimutan at karangyaan ng lahat ng yan. Isang kondisyon, ikaw ay magpatirapa at ako isang bahay. Mga kapatid, sa puntong ito, nalampasan ng Panginoon ang lahat ng ito. Sa anong paraan? Papag-aralan po natin sa Bible sa ating pagtatapos. Lagi pong kinukot ni Jesus Christ ang sinasabi niya sa kalaban sa David, It is written. It is written. It is written. Nasusulat. So we can resist the devil by submission to God. Ayan po ang kaparaanan mga kapatid. Jesus had manifest His surrender to the will and the purpose of God. Ano bang purpose ng Diyos sa buhay mo? Ba't kanya ililigtas sa iyong pamilya, trabaho, kanap buhay? Ba't ka nandirito sa mundong ito? Anong kahalagahan ng buhay mo? It is about submission to God which set us an example. Mga kapatid, resist the devil by using the word of God tulad ni Jesus Christ. Each of the three temptations in the wilderness was met with Jesus' reply, It is written. Indicates that Jesus was quoting what's in the scriptures. Church, kapatid, we can resist the devils, the roaring, the device, the plot, the plans, and all of the temptations by taking up the sword of the Spirit and which is the Word of God. Sa akin po pagtatapos, mga kapatid, ang kahalagahan ng salita ng Diyos Ito pong magbibigay sa atin ng pagtutugumpay. Ang sabi nga po sa salita ng Diyos, mga kapatid, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but your word shall not pass away. Mga minamahal, men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Napakahalaga po ng salita ng Diyos. You have the Bible? Read your Bible. 
you don't know where to start, you start with the book of John. Pag-aralan mong buhay ni Jesus Christ. And then you will see, so then, ang sabi sa Romans 10, 17, so then faith comes by hearing. Ang pananapalatay ng gagaling sa pakikinig, at ang pakikinig ay sa pumamagitan ng salita ng Diyos. When you start to read from the Word of God, and as you pray, unti-unti bubuksan ng Diyos sa inyong puso. Ang sabi po mga kapatid sa salita ng Diyos, diyan ka magkakaroon ng kalakasan upang malabanan ang mga temptation na kanaan at ibibigay ng kalaban. So, with my final verse mga kapatid, ang sabi po sa Ephesians 6 verse 10, Finally, my brethren, Paul says, Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Paano ka magiging malakas sa, sa, sa tinatawag na uh, sa Panginoon at ang kapangyarihan ng kanyang kalakasan ang magkita ng kanyang salita. Mga minamahal, sabi nga sa awit, I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. No, no one join me, the word said, still I will follow, no turning back, no turning back. The word behind me, but the cross before me. Well, ang cross, patuloy na magbibigay sa atin, ng kalakasan that Jesus Christ died for me because He loves me and He wants the best for me. Sana po ay nakita natin ang kahalagahan na magpagpatuloy mula sa salita ng Panginoon. Keep it up and stay in the Word of God. Amen. Tayo po ay manalangin. Panginoon Diyos na mga pangirian sa lahat, kami po ay lumalapit sa luklukot ng trono ng iyong biyaya upang panalangin po ang buong iglesia at ang sangkatauhan Buksan niyo pong patuloy ang aming mga puso na kami patuloy na magtiwala sa iyong mga pangako maging sa panahon ito, Panginoon, na may matinding krisis. Pinapanalangin po namin patuloy ang bawat isa sa panahon ito, lalong lalo na po, O Diyos, ang bawat nanunungkulan sa aming gobyerno. Sa presidente hanggang sa pinakababang kwestyon ng panunungkulan, inyo po silang patnubayan at sa kanilang pagtutulong-tulungan ay magkaroon ng tinatawag na kalutasan sa mga pagsubok. Sa bawat may karamdaman, O Diyos, langin namin ang kagalingan. Sa bawat miyembro ng pamilya, mga rinungulan ng hanap buhay, paglaoban niyo po sila, O Diyos, at imit niyo po ang kanilang mga pangayon. O Diyos, muli sa bawat isa sa amin na kami patuloy na sumunod ng may kaiwisan at tumulong para sa kumubuti sa lahat sa panahon ito ng may krisis. Tulungan niyo po kami at ang St. Matthew's Church na kami patuloy na maging malakas, bukas, at matapang na harapin ang mga pagsubok sa aming mga buhay. Pag-ingatan niyo po kami lahat, lahat o Diyos, na kayo ang aming kanlungan at kapayapaan sa aming mga puso. Pagpalayan niyo po kami at sa bawat isa o Diyos at maging sa ating lahat, maging tayo po mga kapatid, ay hindi nagkakasama na pisikal, ayo po ay iisa, iisa ay Kristo Jesus. Amen. <tinyo>